guys, Denise with Lazy K Mountain Homestead. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, it's been a while since I made a video on cooking, but today we are going to make a Butterfinger poke cake. And I'm making this for a birthday, and uh, we are getting ready to go camping, so my kitchen is a mess. We've been up since the crack of dawn cooking for the camping trip. So <laughs> I thought I'd make a video of this. Because I did promise a chocolate poke cake. I don't know why my camera is going in and out, but if it is, I apologize. Okay, this is also, I guess, what they call a hack because it uses a cake mix. And Betty Crocker is what I like to use. Okay, it also uses uh, one package of chocolate instant uh, pudding. So... Let me put the tripod down so you guys can kind of see. This does have a lot of ingredients in it, um, but if you saw my other poke cakes, they, they all kind of have the same thing. They have got sour cream and oil and that kind of stuff. And it has yummy layer on top. So here we go. And of course, Butterfingers. Okay, so I think you can see that. I got the recipe from Willis's Uncle Gary. He, he likes to make cakes. And so we thought we would go ahead and make this cake for Austin and Cooper's birthday. So we're going to put one whole cake mix in here, and it's devil's food. I'm going to add a 3.9 ounce chocolate instant pudding. Now I'm using a Jello brand because when I was at Walmart yesterday, they didn't have their own. Otherwise, I would have used great value. Okay, we're just going to kind of mix that around a little bit. Get the pudding and cake mixed together. All right, and to this, we're going to add three eggs. And I've already kind of scrambled them up with a fork. Let's see if I can put that tripod down just a tad bit more. Okay. It also calls for a three-fourths cup of vegetable oil. And three-fourths cup of sour cream. So, as you can imagine, it's going to be a really moist, yummy cake. When I made the uh, honey bun cake, it had the same kind of ingredients in it for moisture, and that really turned out to be a good cake. And my fingers are clean. All right. And it calls for two teaspoons of vanilla. So we'll go ahead and put that in here. One and two. And a half a cup of warm water. So we'll just put that in there. Okay, I'm going to mix this by hand. If you want to use your um, regular stand mixer or hand mixer, you know, you can do that too. So we're just going to mix this around till it's all nicely incorporated and blended well. And it's going to be thick, as you can see. And I'm using my Danish uh, dough whisk. I really like these. If you see my other videos, you know how much I like them. And what I'm going to use uh, today is a um, 9 by 13 and I have already sprayed it with uh, spray oil. And I've got my oven preheated at 350 Fahrenheit. Okay, now to this, this is a Butterfinger cake. So what the recipe calls for is one package of fun size Butterfingers. Well, when I went to Walmart yesterday to get all the ingredients, they only had like the little strip. I couldn't find a bag full. And it says 10.5 ounces. Because what we're going to do is um, put ground up Butterfinger in there. So this is 10 baby size Butterfingers or fun size or whatever you guys call it. And you just go ahead and put that in there. Because you're going to need at least that again for the topping. Because we're going to kind of 
crush them up, but have them to where they're kind of chunky on the top. And that has some yummy stuff too, which we'll get to. And of course, my uh, recipe will be in the directions so you guys can get to it. All right. Like I said, I've got this uh, throwaway pan because we're going to be camping. And that way I don't have to take one of my nice pans. Okay, I think that looks good. Let me go ahead and put that back down there again so you can see it is really, really thick. Let me just double check my ingredients. Yep, that's it. Well, get off of there. <laughs> I don't like to waste anything. May not be wasted much, but it seems like it is. All right. Wipe that off on my tea towel. And with the spatula, I'm going to go ahead and put it in this pan. And you're going to have to spread it around once you get it in the pan because it is a really thick batter. But it's going to be super yummy and moist. Now, if you guys wanted to add chocolate chips or anything else to this batter, you certainly could. Which... I would probably do that, but I'm going to try to make chocolate chip ice cream at the campsite. Okay, I'm just spreading it around as level as you possibly can. And those butterfingers make it kind of chunky in there, so if you're seeing those kind of orangey chunks, that's what it is. And I just chopped those up in my food processor. And this does, of course, have peanut butter in it. So if you're allergic to peanut butter, you don't want to have this cake. My granddaughter, uh, Kathleen, is allergic to peanut butter. And it makes me sad. She said, that's okay, Grandma, because I really don't miss it. Because she only had peanut butter one time when she was little. And that's when she found out that she was allergic. Sad. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of drop this on my counter just to get some of the air bubbles out, and plus I can kind of level it that way too. Okay, I'm going to put it in the 350 degree preheated oven for, let me see how long, 35 to 40 minutes. And we'll be back with the next part of the poke cake. And remember, this is a poke cake, so you're going to have to have something to skewer or fork or I use a little dowel and you poke the cake because we're going to put some yummies in it. So see you in a minute. Okay, guys, um, I've taken the cake out. It took exactly 35 minutes. Let me show you what it looks like. Look at that. Mmm, smells so good, too. What I'm going to do is let it cool for 10 minutes before I poked it. Poke it, rather. Um, the last time I poked one of these cakes when it was still warm, it kind of sunk in the middle and it let all the air out. So that's a mistake. And I'm sharing that with you because I was in too much of a hurry. So I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, guys, the next step is we're going to make a sauce to put in the holes that we poked our cake. So what it is is peanut butter. Now, you can do this in the microwave if you want to. I'm doing it on the stove because my microwave is not working good. So we're just going to go ahead and get that peanut butter kind of melted down so it's liquidy more than, you know, a, a spread. So I've just got it over a medium heat. I'm not going to keep it on there long. And that's about two-thirds cup of peanut butter. You can use chunky if you want to. This is creamy. That's what I had on hand. Okay, so what we're going to do now is pour an entire container of uh, sweetened condensed milk and that's 14 ounces, and I'm just going to go ahead and pour it right in there on top of that peanut butter. And we're going to mix that around. This is a pretty decadent cake, so it's going to be rich. So we're just going to go ahead and see if you guys can see what I'm doing here. Just mix in the sweet condensed milk and that peanut butter all together so it's nice 
and mixed and thick and yummy. Now, if you think it's too thick, the recipe does call for adding a little bit of milk, but I'm not going to because I want it to be a nice, thick, creamy sauce to go over. Now, Willis makes a strawberry cake in the springtime, and he just uses a one container of the sweetened condensed milk, and you just pour it right over the cake, don't you? Yeah. With the holes? Yeah, so it's it's like this, so I think it's going to be fine. There you go, because you don't want your cake to get soupy, and I, I'm thinking by adding the milk that it would be. So let's go back over to the cake. Okay, we're back over to the cake, and what I wanted to show you was what I use to poke my holes. Now, you don't have to have them this big if you don't want to, but because we've got such a thick sauce, I think that it's best to have a, it's just a little wooden dowel, and I just poke, poke the holes like that all the way down. I just think we needed a little bit bigger hole. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this cake is pretty cool, and we're just going to go ahead and pour all of this over the cake. See if you can see what I'm doing there. Let me put that tripod down just a teeny bit. Yep, there you go. And then we'll spread it with the spatula so it gets all over that cake and in those holes. And you can see this time since I didn't rush my my hole poking, my cake didn't collapse in the middle. Okay, so what the recipe says now is to go ahead and put this in the fridge for about 30 minutes, and then we will proceed with the next. Doesn't that look good? Oh, man, I could just, I probably will be licking this. But you can see how it goes down in those holes. Let me show you. See where you can see it going down in the holes? That's what you want. There you go. And I go all the way to the ends of the cake because you want it to go in every little nook and cranny there. Okay. Well, that is that part. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the fridge so I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay, everybody, we're at the last step. And I'm going to go ahead and put the tripod down so you can see what I'm doing. The cake has been in the fridge. You can see all the holes, all that yummy went down in there. So what you're going to do now is take some whipped cream, Cool Whip, just go over the whole cake like that. And however thick you want it to be is up to you. And we like Cool Whip. Okay. And I'm going to kind of make it a little uh, chunky, you know, so there's some uh, peaks and valleys and stuff like that in it. All right, there we go. Okay, next step, I went ahead and um, lick my fingers. <laughs> I've got some chopped up uh, Butterfinger, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it all over this cake, all over the whip topping there. Doesn't that look good? Oh man. This is, I love Butterfingers. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to put a couple little like dollops in the middle or dollops in the middle here of this because you're going to put it back in the fridge. And I've got some Butterfingers that I cut in half, just a bite size, and I'm just going to kind of place them in there, like so. Oops, that one came apart. And I'll just uh, kind of stick them in there like that. That is your Butterfinger cake, except for the last, you're going to use some chocolate sauce. And you're just going to do this. <laughs> okay, and there it is, guys. 
Look at that, Willis. Better get out of the way. I'm on kitty. Your Butterfinger chocolate poke cake. Hope you guys will enjoy. And I'm sure it's going to taste good when we get to the campground tonight. I'll take some pictures and add it to the video. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you soon from Lazy K Mountain Homestead. Bye, Willis!